Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today in this uh, fine Wednesday for our first webinar of 2023. Hope that everyone is having a wonderful new year and a wonderful new month of February. Can't believe that we already got through January so far. Anyway, I hope that you all are doing very well and are having a great week and are excited for a great webinar of content that we're going to talk about libraries today. I'll be demonstrating this with AFT Fathom, but the good news is, is that it's the same process and uh, procedure for all of our software for using libraries. And we're going to go ahead and just dive straight into this. So, A, uh, what is a library uh, with our software? A library contains information. And so, whenever you're working in our software, and if you, for example, open up the system properties window and you want to use one of the AFT standard fluids, this entire list of fluids exists in our AFT Fathom fluid library, okay? If you are using a pipe in your model and you choose from this dropdown where you can select a pipe material, this comes from our built-in pipe material library. If you are using a valve, and you choose the handbook option, these are several handbook valve loss models that are available for you. You just pick whichever one you're using, and there's the K-factor. Now, uh, these come from sources like Crane and Idle Chick and Miller. So we've built in a lot of that information for you. So whenever you're picking a, a piece of information or a data set, to work with, typically it's going to reside in one of our libraries. Now, we obviously don't have every fluid or pipe material or valve known to man, and so it's really easy to create your own custom pieces of information and save it for later, and that is called a custom library. So. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to create uh, new libraries from scratch for pipe materials, uh, fluid properties, etc. And then I'll demonstrate what you need to do in order to share that information with somebody else. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. And where do you find the libraries? Well, you just go to the library menu and then come straight down to library manager. Now, if you're using our latest versions, Fathom 12, Arrow 9, Impulse 9, or AFT Extreme 2, if you're using one of our latest versions uh, that we have now or later, then they're called libraries. In previous versions of our software, they were called databases, and the structure was a little bit different. So one of the things that we did with the new library structure is that we just went ahead and consolidated everything into a single window with multiple sections that you can click on, and you have direct access to be able to edit any of those items in that list versus the previous uh, method with databases, you'd have to open up separate windows. So this will save you a few clicks. So let's talk about fluids first, because that's probably the easiest uh, to begin with. So if you want to create a custom fluid where we either uh, don't have it in our AFT standard library, Maybe you have a very special fluid, or if it doesn't exist in the RefProp database or in the Kempac database, or maybe you just have your own data from another software that you want to bring right into AFT, 
Well, then you can easily create your own custom fluid library. You can also go to the library menu and then click on edit fluids and it'll take you straight to that panel. So that would be the first thing to do is to click on edit fluids. Next thing is to click on where it says add new fluid. Now, if you uncheck this box here, this will hide all of the fluids that we've provided for you. This makes it really easy to be able to filter out things so that you can see which are the fluids that you have defined on your own. And that way it gets rid of everything else. So a little nice little tip there. All right, so I'm gonna click on add new fluid and the information you have to specify is very basic. All you need to do is give it a fluid name with a maximum and minimum allowable temperature. And then the minimum amount of data that you need is simply density and viscosity as a function of temperature. So as long as you enter information in that format, then you'll be able to do all the hydraulic calculations in the software. Now there's a few optional columns of input. So the first two are specific heat and thermal conductivity. So if you want to model heat transfer with AFT Fathom, you have to specify those two parameters as functions of temperature as well. And then you also need to specify an enthalpy reference. It can be anything, you know, just a reference enthalpy value at a reference temperature. As long as you specify those three parameters, enthalpy, specific heat, and thermal conductivity, then you'll be able to do all the hydraulic or you'll be able to do all the heat transfer calculations in the software. Now, vapor pressure is also something that is recommended, but optional. And so I highly recommend it because if you want to see, uh, if you want to do your NPSHA calculations for your pumps, then you're going to need vapor pressure for that. Also, Fathom can compare the local static pressure in a pipe with the vapor pressure, and if your static pressure is less, you'll see warning messages, and that would imply that you have cavitation going on. It doesn't model the cavitation, but it identifies where it's happening so that you can go back and fix that problem. Now, the thing is, when you specify all this data in these columns, we're not using any of this data for calculations. Instead, we're fitting that data with either a polynomial or an XY curve fit. So keep that in mind. If you have a, a lot of scatter in your data that, that you're trying to uh, fit, then it may not be as accurate. So when you are reviewing your results, don't look at a single data point and compare values. Instead, look at the uh, curve fit that we're using to fit that data that's where we're going to be doing our calculations from okay that's all there is to it for a fluid database so after you're done creating your custom fluid and you fill out all that data and you uh fit it with a, a, a curve then it will then appear in the list of aft standard fluids so after you go through and you define your custom information, you'll be able to go in here and find it under the AFT standard fluid set. So that's where your custom fluids will end up, AFT standard. Now, if you're using AFT arrow, then the information that you need is slightly different. And I'll show you. Uh, where it's different. It's not that difficult, but I just want to walk through it with you for a quick second here. Let's see. Um, and then there's something else that's going to be related when you're dealing with uh, AFT impulse. Okay, so here's AFT arrow. If you were to define a custom fluid in AFT arrow, same process. Just go to library edit fluids click on add new fluid and it's similar you still have to specify a fluid name maximum and minimum allowable temperatures 
but here all you need is viscosity and specific heat as a function of temperature for your gases. So that is the information that is minimum that you need for defining a custom fluid in AFT Arrow. Now there are some additional columns here. You can also specify the thermal conductivity, uh, vapor pressure, and then there's a whole list of uh, enthalpies and densities that you can specify. Uh, why is that? Well, if you are uh, using any of these enthalpies or densities, what you can use is if you go into the AFT standard uh, list of fluids for the equation of state, you can choose from this, uh, or for the enthalpy model, you can choose from this uh, table option. So if you choose table, then this is what it's using. If I go back into here, here's air. So this is enthalpy at 0 0.1 megapascals. And then we have 0 0.4 and, and then 100 and then 20 and 200, so on and so forth. So these are enthalpy values at a constant pressure for a range of temperatures. So if you go in and you specify all of these columns with data, then that's where you can choose from the table option in the system properties and then we'll interpolate between the tables to get your fluid properties now that's not the only thing that you need to specify if you're doing it this way with specified enthalpy and density in the columns the next thing that you also need to do is on the other data tab is specify your molecular weight you also need a enthalpy reference. And then this is where you specify what the pressure values are for each of the uh, density sets and enthalpy sets. So when you have a column of data for density for uh, P3, that would be uh, this column right here. So here's the density at pressure number three. Well, for pressure number three, this is where you're specifying the value for that. Maybe it's 100 PSIA. And so in order to use that table option, not only do you have to specify the values here, you also, you also have to enter in what the pressure uh, values are for density and enthalpy. Now, if you enter information for compressibility factor, critical pressure and temperature, eccentric factor, you can then use some of the more sophisticated fluid models in Aero, like Redlick Kwong and uh, three parameter, so on and so forth. So you can use uh, Peng Robinson, Solov Redlick Kwong. So those are more accurate models. Well, if you wanna be able to use that for your custom fluid, then you have to enter a little bit more data. Now, one thing I wanted to note with AFT impulse is the wave speed of a fluid is a parameter that dictates how fast a transient pressure wave can pass through your piping system. So if you are specifying a custom fluid for AFT impulse, there is another parameter that's required which is the bulk modulus of the fluid. So keep in mind, when you're doing water hammer with AFT impulse, there's an additional parameter here that you need to specify. All right. So that is custom fluids. The next one that I like to talk about is custom pipe materials. So if you, draw, uh, if you drew a pipe on the workspace, to define a pipe, all you need is inner diameter, length, and friction model. That's the minimum amount of input that you need to specify. So that's not too bad, but it is really helpful to be able to pick a material that you're working with 
so that you can go by a nominal size and schedule. So if there's a material that you're working with, here's how you create your own custom pipe material library. You go to library and then edit pipe materials. And that takes you straight to the pipe material section in the library manager. Now, these are the pipe materials that we have built for you. Now, all of these ones are read only. And let's take a look at example of uh, steel. So here we have steel pipe and this goes from an eighth of an inch in diameter up to 48 inches in diameter. Well, if you want to model larger than 48 inch diameter pipes for steel, you're not going to be able to actually edit or add to this pipe material library. Again, because it's read only, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on new material, and then that's where you would do your new and larger sizes. Now, a quick sidestep I want to take here is when you look at all of these pipe materials that we have built in for you, you can actually see some more information about each of these pipe material data sets. So if you browse on your computer to where the software is installed, typically it's going to be on your C drive, followed by AFT products, and then AFT Fathom. We have this folder here called Pipe Material Libraries. Uh, we also have that for Arrow and Impulse and Extreme. So same thing. So this is where you can see the text files of all of the pipe material information. Now, I highly recommend do not ever open up a file from this folder, or rather from this folder or anything in it. Instead, I would recommend that you copy this folder and paste it up somewhere else on your computer and open it from there. The reason why is because you don't want to accidentally mess up anything in that file. So I copied it and now I pasted it here to my desktop. So if I open it up in my desktop, <clears throat> here's the materials and let's open up the one for steel. So this gives you some, different, some additional information of where we got this data. So here, the material source is from the ASME B3610 standard, but that's only for the dimensional data, which is simply the material, the nominal size and type, and therefore the wall thickness. That's the only thing that comes out of this standard. Other pieces of information, like the roughness, that comes from Crane Technical Paper 410, the density reference comes from the piping handbook, the thermal conductivity. This also comes from the piping handbook as the specific heat, bulk modulus of elasticity. Again, this is another parameter that you need for impulse with water hammer modeling is the bulk modulus of elasticity. There's one for the fluid and there is a bulk modulus of elasticity for the pipe material. You need both when you're doing the water hammer. So, over the years, we've done better at documenting the various references and resources that we're using. And when we most recently updated the file, and uh, you can see what the updates were right here. And that way, uh, you can see where we're getting our data from. Now, there are some data sets that are. Uh, that do not have as much uh, data. So let's look at steel for AFT customary. So whenever you see like ANSI or DIN or EN or ASTM or, ASTM or ANSI, uh, those are data sets that we are pulling from an actual standard or code that exists. If you see customary, that means that we got that data from somewhere and it's not from an official standard. You know, maybe it's data from a, a pipe manufacturer. Maybe it's a data set from a handbook somewhere. So when you see AFT customary, there's going to be maybe some potential 
uh, holes missing where we don't have all the data. So maybe what we did was we just used the same roughness as steel ANSI for this. And we should probably document that. So my uh, word of caution to you is that if you're using any of the AFT customary pipe materials in your model, uh, beware of that issue. The other difficulty is with HDPE piping. When we were researching this, we were trying to find good standards for HDPE and uh, some of them conflicted with each other on their data. And so uh, which one to use, you know, uh, it, it's hard to say. Uh, so we kind of leave that to you where you would be putting in your own custom information itself. Now, back to Fathom. How do you create a custom material? It's really easy. You just go down and click on the new material button. So I'm going to click on new material, and this is where you have to fill out these pieces of information. All right, let's do uh, uh, let's do adamantium in honor of uh, Wolverine. <laughs> okay, uh, <clears throat> it could be a real pipe material; doesn't have to be. Doesn't matter. Uh, you could even do uh, clay piping if you want. All right, let's make some stuff up. Nominal size, let's call it 10 inch. And material type, let's call it shiny uh, number one. And then this is where you can choose the geometry. You can do some uh, cylindrical annulus, non-cylindrical pipe. If you have your own ducting information for duct length or you know widths and heights, you can do rectangular duct. And then that's how you can specify things accordingly. All right, so I'll put in an inner diameter. Let's uh, call it 9.8 inches. That means that the wall thickness would be 0 0.1. Now we have to give a description for the frictional data set, which you can use any of these, absolute roughness, explicit friction factor, Hazen Williams, et cetera. Well, I'm going to stick with absolute roughness for right now. And I'm going to give it a name called uh, Smooth Roughness, if I could spell. So Smooth Roughness, that's going to have a value of 0 0.0007 inches. Click OK. And uh, now we have a new pipe material with a nominal size and a schedule. Let's do another schedule for 10 inch pipe. So I'm gonna click on the size level. So if you wanna do another uh, schedule, you have to click on the uh, size level first. So when I click on size level, that's where I can create a new type or a new schedule. So here, we go in, it's using the same nominal size and materials before. This is gonna be called shiny number two. And we'll make this be 9.9 uh, .9 inches. So in that case, the wall thickness 0.05. All right, so we've got a uh, size with two schedules. And let's go ahead and do one more size. So if I wanna do another size, I need to go to the material level. So I click on the material level, that's where I can click on new size. And we'll call this 12 inch, uh, shiny number one. And so this is maybe 11.8. And so the wall thickness is 0 0.1, so on and so forth. And I'll go ahead and do one more. So I'll create shiny number two for 12 inch as well. Shiny number two, inner diameter 11.9 inches. So that may be 0.05. All right. Perfect. So here we have a material with two sizes. And each size has a uh, has two separate types. Okay, now with this 
piece of information, let's talk about these tabs over here. So when I first created the material level, I had to create a frictional data set. That is a standard frictional data set right here. You can create multiple frictional data sets as standard values, which makes it a little bit easier to specify them when you build your model. So let's say I want to create another uh, frictional data set for the entire material. If you want the frictional data set or insulation or thermal physical properties to apply to all sizes and all schedules, then you need to make sure that you do that at the pipe material level, okay? That way it applies to everything. But you can get as sophisticated as you want. If you want to have a different roughness value for each schedule, you certainly can. It's just going to make it a big headache to try and manage all that data. All right, so I select my material level. I'm going to click on new data set for friction. So here, I'm going to give it another absolute roughness option. I'm going to call this rough roughness. And maybe, the, maybe this is going to be 0 0.07. So now I've got smooth roughness and I've got rough roughness. You can do as many of these as you want. You can even use Hazen Williams, uh, Hazen factor number one, and we can call that 150. Keep in mind, I am just totally making all this stuff up. So if I'm using values that are not very realistic, uh, don't judge me on this. <laughs> He's in factor number two, and maybe we'll call it 120. So that's how you can create multiple frictional data sets as standards for your new custom material. You can also do insulation sets where you would specify insulation types. So there's uh, these different types that you can work with and the thickness. I'm not gonna deal with that right now, but I do wanna point out the pipe thermophysical properties. So there's several parameters. Same thing, start by clicking on specify properties. So here you would have to specify your thermal conductivity as a function of temperature, all right? That's one of the pieces of information that you need to specify. Now, looky here, we also have modulus of elasticity. Why is it that we have the modulus of elasticity? That is not a parameter that is even used in Fathom. Well, here's the reason why. Let's say you start with your Fathom model and then later you want to do a water hammer analysis and you bring in your model and your custom piping information from Fathom into Impulse, well, Impulse needs the modulus of elasticity. So it just saves you an extra step later. So that way, if you're building out this data set now, you can just specify it now. That way, it's one less thing that you would have to do when you go to... Um, do your water hammer analysis. So you can do your thermal conductivity as a function of temperature. That's required for heat transfer. You also need to specify the density value for the piping. And then you could specify your modulus of elasticity, and that would be for impulse. And, and that's how you would specify your properties. You can then look at the uh, graphs to be able to see those pieces of information. All right, so now I have my new material, my new sizes and types. If I click on close, I can now open up this pipe right here in the workspace and I can choose my custom material, adamantium, there it is. So here's my 10 inch size and I have my two types. I can do my 12 inch size and then my two types. Now here's why I was talking about doing <clears throat> multiple frictional data sets. So if you were to choose one of the 
pipe material sets that we've made for you, there's only one. So if you were to choose a standard, there's only one option and it's absolute roughness, okay? So that's all that you get if you're using any of our pipe material sets. Now, you can click on user specified and then you can do whatever you want. But <clears throat> when you're building out your pipe materials and if you wanna create some extra data, then this is where you can specify which standard set of friction that you're using. Are you doing your smooth roughness or your rough roughness? Or are you doing your Hazen Williams? And so that's the nice thing about entering uh, multiple data sets for your friction because it, it makes it easier to specify that rather than having to go in and do user specified. Now, as you probably can guess, to try and go through the process of creating new pipe materials, if you have a whole bunch of uh, materials, can be a bit of a pain. Um, where to go? Let's see. Um, one moment here. There we go. Okay, so here's my adamantium, and I've got my uh, two sizes. Well, most likely, you're gonna be dealing with a lot more data. So rather than going through the process of having to create each material and size one at a time, that's a really painful process. That's where importing from a text file is awesome. So if you click on importing from a file, this is where you can use Excel to make to build out your uh, data set. And then uh, these are the columns of data that you need. Material name, nominal size, type class or schedule, inner diameter, and wall thickness. So you specify those columns, and then this is where you set up the units for each column, and then you can import this from a file. So let's take a look at that really quick. So uh, let me show you something here. So here's an example of what you can do. Let's say that you have this PDF of pipe materials and you know, you've got all the uh, pipe materials in uh, your nominal sizes and then the uh, different class or type that's going to be the DR7, 7.39, 7 uh, et cetera. And then you've got your wall thicknesses. And so all of this data you want to import into the software so that way you can easily select from that list. Well, Adobe has some really cool tools available where you can actually save out this Adobe PDF as an Excel spreadsheet. I've already done that, and uh, that is what this looks like. Uh, it's opening on my other screen. Give me one second here. So here is all that data that came in from the PDF, okay? So I've got all this data in Excel, and the reason why this is really useful is because I can then essentially copy this data and paste it into a format that is easier to work with. So I did exactly that. I started by basically setting up my nominal size where it went from uh, three quarters of an inch to 65 inches in diameter. And I've got my units. And then I have the actual outer diameter and the minimum wall and the average inner diameter. And then these are the columns that are needed to import into Fathom. 
So here I've got the name of the pipe material. Uh, you can you I just use the manufacturer's name of the catalog. Uh, you could do whatever you want. And then you know here's the nominal size, the class, and then hence the inner diameter and the wall thickness. So I have all this data that I want to import into Fathom. Well, that's where now I have my data set all ready to go. Oops, I opened the wrong file. Sorry about that. So after I built that out, I saved it as a CSV file. So when you save it as a CSV file, that's what Fathom needs to be able to import. So we've got all of the columns that we need. And I deleted all the rows for materials that we didn't have. So as you can see, this first uh, DR7, this only goes up to 24 inches in diameter. So I deleted all the rows up to 65 inches for DR7. So that is something that you'll want to keep in mind is to not bring in all that uh, stuff. So I've got 219 rows of data. And I do have a header row. So once that is all ready to go, now when I'm back in Fathom, I can go to my library, edit pipe materials, and I'm going to click on import from file. So all of this is set up uh, for uh, comma separated for the delimiter, and then uh, cylindrical, I've got my inches for units, absolute roughness, let's call it, you know, this is HDPE, it's probably really small, 0 0.000, let's do one more, uh, 7, I don't know, and uh, data has, or the data file has a header row, so we'll click on import from file, and I am looking for this one, and we'll click open. File import is complete. And we just give it a sec and look at that. There it is. So I've got all of my sizes and all of my schedules for that custom material. So now I can go into my pipe and here's the custom material and bam, you just go in select whatever your size is whatever your uh schedule or type and really that's all there is to it it's so easy to build your own custom materials by importing it you can also create your own custom fittings so when you're in a pipe property window if you go to the fittings and losses tab and then click on specify fittings and losses Instead of having to use a whole bunch of junctions to represent your losses, you can just as easily, if not easier, lump them in <clears throat> to the pipe itself. So I've got seven of these, 20 of those, four of these. There's valves, check valves, orifice plates, area changes, entrance and exits, etc. And so once you choose however many there are, basically we just total up a K factor and then that's how it calculates an additional pressure drop onto your pipe when it's doing the calculations. All right, now there are some others and uh, this is where we have uh, different types of geometry. So you can see here there's orifice plates, nozzles, venturis, uh, screens like honeycomb cells, uh, etc. And so, if you're going to do custom fittings where maybe you have a filter and it's not really fitting in any of these categories, just use other, and then all you really need is just a line item with a loss factor. That's all you need. So, again, we are taking our data from resources like Idle Chick. Miller and uh, Darby and Crane for you to be able to choose from. But you can easily create your own. 
So similar to doing pipe materials, if I went to library and edit fluids and lists, you would do just about the, the same thing where if you're gonna create a new loss item one by one, you click the button and then you're gonna choose your source. Well, this is user defined. And then category. So if it's not any of these, then just use other. And then you can do a type. You know, if it doesn't really fit any of these, maybe just uh, pick one because it really doesn't care. All it needs, you know, the most important part is the loss value. So any, you know, weird looking object with a loss value is going to be perfectly fine. So that's how you would go through the process of, you know, building this out. You can also do area ratio for your geometry. You can do constant K factors, or you can do as a function of a friction factor, you can put notes in there. And that's how you would go about building a custom fitting. But again, if you've got a whole list of them, it's going to be, you know, maybe you have 300 valves from a manufacturer with their K factors. It's going to be a real pain to just build all those one by one. So instead, you would use the import capability again. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details of that. You can refer to the help file, and this will show you how you need to go through setting up your Excel spreadsheet in order to import your custom fittings from a CSV file. So this gives you instructions on how to do that. And again, once you import these for Fathom, then you can do that. You know, you've got the same data, just bring it into Arrow, Impulse, and Extreme. And that is uh, custom fittings. Okay, let's talk about custom components. So uh, if you have a custom uh, component that you want to build out, you can go in here and just drag, uh, drag and drop a junction. You know, well, let me start with this. Let's say, you know, we don't have eccentric reducers in our software. Uh, you can right click and you can choose, uh, let me do this one. I can right click and I can customize the icon and I can choose this one. And so that looks like a eccentric reducer, but Fathom does not have the loss model for an eccentric reducer built in. So what would you do if you have eccentric reducers? Well, it's not too difficult. You would just go in here to user specified and then simply put in the K factor. So uh, maybe I'll call this eccentric reducer number one and we'll give it a k factor of 0.25 click ok so now if you want to be able to use this option for other area changes uh, other area change junctions all you do is you select that junction on the workspace go to library then click on add junction to library I'm going to keep the same name. You can change it if you want, but I'm going to keep it as the same name. So now when I drag and drop another junction on the workspace, if I want to use that custom component, this is where you would click on library junction. So here this is eccentric reducer number one. And I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now that only takes the uh, uh, information inside. It, it's not going to uh, take the, uh, um, uh, you have to specify the uh, icon in here if you uh, previously, when you're adding the component to the library. But nevertheless, that's where you can quickly access that data. Now let's take this one step further. I'm gonna give you a bonus today and I'm gonna show you how you can lump in or how you can put in a whole family of pump curves 
into a single pump junction. <clears throat> so here's my pump junction. And if you're going to put in a pump curve, you would click on enter curve data. And there's two options. There's simple and multiple. So simple is where you're specifying a pump curve. And that is going to be the curve for that specific object. Multiple is a lot of fun. So if you choose to turn on multiple, this is where you can tie a pump curve to a specific RPM and impeller trim. So let's say that you have a spreadsheet that has a whole bunch of pump curves in it. Maybe it looks uh, something like this, where you've got several different curves based upon the affinity laws. So here we have all these curves uh, for an eight inch impeller, 1800 RPM. And then this is the curve for a seven inch impeller at 1800 RPM so on and so forth so here's how you would go about building this into your pump junction for all of these curves i'm going to start with the 1800 8 inch impeller so i'm going to copy that data from excel go back into fathom and we'll delete that and i'm going to click on create so here this will be 1800 eight inches in impeller and then a description so this could be model number so i'm going to call this uh model one and then next thing you would need to do is paste in your data so don't do control v <clears throat> because that will paste all that data into a single cell instead make sure that you use the edit table option and click paste and that pastes in the data once you paste in the data we have to generate a curve fit so we're going to generate our curve fit and then we're going to update this configuration which basically ties these curves to this piece of information so we'll click on update configuration. There we go. Let's do, so if I click on this guy, there's my curve. So let's do another one. So I'm gonna do 1800, seven inches. So this would be called model two. Go back into your spreadsheet, copy the data and copy it, or grab the data and copy it, paste it in, Fit it with the curve, update the configuration, and let's do another. So this will be six inches. Model three. Go back to Excel. Copy your data. Go back into Fathom and paste it. Generate your curve fit and update. Now let's do a new speed. So here I'm going to click on create. This will be now. 3600 rpm and this will be four inch impeller actually uh yeah so here's my four inch impeller and i'm going to call this model a and we're going to paste it in generate the curve fit and update the configuration and now I'm going to do one more. 3600 5 inch impeller model B. And that's going to be this set of data here. And then we'll paste this in, generate the curve fit, update the configuration, and there we go. So now I have five different options with a single pump junction. Look at that. So here for my 1800 so when you when you do the multiple pump configuration option, that's what gives you these drop down menus. You have to do a multiple configuration, okay? So once you do, look at this. You can now go <clears throat> eight inch, 
seven inch, six inch, where all you're doing is you're just entering that data once and then you use it forever. And then here's the 3600 RPM, four inch and five inch. So you can modify that however you want. Same thing. I'm going to call this, uh, you know, pump manufacturer. Let's we'll call it Manu uh, A. All right. So I select it on the workspace and I go to my library, add junction to library, keep the same name, click OK. And now I can go in here and simply click on library junction and then pump manufacturer and bam there it is so this is why this is really powerful is because not only does this allow me to easily you uh, reuse any of that data within a single model but in any fathom model i can open up a brand new workspace So if I open up a brand new workspace, I can go in here and just choose my pump manufacturer A. And then I can go in and I can do my eccentric reducer number one. And so there's my 0.25 for the K factor. I can go in here and draw a pipe and I can use my you know, either of my custom pipe materials. So now to finish things up for today, now we're gonna talk about where is this information saved and located and how do you get this information to somebody else? <clears throat> so for that, let's go back into the library manager. Okay, so here, when you open up the library manager, the uh, default section that you'll be in is the library browser. The library browser has all of your libraries. There's a whole bunch of them. And there's two different types of libraries associated with our software. So, there is the AFT internal library. That is this guy right here. So the AFT internal library, this is where we have all of the fluids in the AFT standard library that we've provided for you. So that's our AFT standard fluids. We have AFT standard installation data sets. We have AFT standard fittings elbows, valves, check valves, etc. So all of that information that we have provided for you that you can use is in the AFT internal library. Now, a long, long time ago, way back in the days of Fathom 7 and previous, we actually contain all of the pipe materials that we provided for you in the AFT internal library as well. When we came out with Fathom 8, that's when we started separating out the pipe materials into their own library because that made it a little bit easier for us to manage the pipe materials over time as we were trying to document the references better for where we're getting all that data. And so when we split out the pipe materials by themselves, that's data that can potentially evolve over the years as we compile more data. And so splitting out made it easier to manage. Nevertheless, the AFT internal library of stuff that we provide for you, all of that stuff is read only. Now, even though these are highlighted in blue for the pipe materials, these are also read only that I discussed before. So that's all the stuff that we've provided for you. 
Now, let's talk about whenever you create something custom, doesn't matter what it is, custom fluid, custom uh, component like a valve or a pump, custom fitting, custom pipe material, custom insulation, anything custom that you create like how I did today, all of that gets put into your local user library, which is on your individual computer. Okay, so as we can see, if I expand this list, here are the two custom junctions that I created today. Here's my eccentric reducer, and there's my pump. I also have my custom pipe materials. I have the adamantium for Wolverine that I created, and then I have my HDPE piping. So anything custom that you make is going to reside in the local user library <clears throat> on your computer. Where in the world is this library saved? Well, it is buried way down into this deep, dark location. Uh, that's kind of on purpose so that you don't find it. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, that's really not the main reason, but it's buried under your C drive, users, your username, App data, roaming, applied flow technology, AFT Fathom version 12. And finally, the name is called FTH underscore user 12 dot dat. Arrow would be called ARO underscore user 9 dot dat. So that is your local user library. And as you can see, I've got 215 pipe materials and I have two junctions and nothing else. So when you want to share this information with somebody else, <clears throat> you are not going to browse to this location and select that file and email it to somebody else. That's not how you do it. What you need to do is use the library browser here to where you transfer the or essentially copy the information from your local user library into another library well there's two options you can create a new library or you can add an existing one so here is user a and here is user b so user A has their uh, local user library, L-U-L for short, <laughs> and user B has their local user library, all right? So user B wants user A to share that information with them. <clears throat> so user b right here let's say that they cr created their own custom uh external file uh we'll call this file one so if they already created their own custom uh library file maybe it's got pipe materials and valves and pumps in it and they say, hey, user A, can you just put your information in my file that I already have? Then user A would be able to say, sure, send it to me. So B would send user A their file, and that's where user A would use this option to add an existing uh, library. So they're going to uh, do that. Well, here... We don't have that. So user B, they don't have anything. So if you want to transfer the information out of your local user library and you want to give it to somebody else, we're going to create a new library. So I'm going to click on create new library and I'm going to call this uh, Ben's custom info for user number two and we'll call this 
pipes, pipes and area changes and pumps. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just, you can see the flexibility of how you can do this. So I just created a new library and look at that. It's right here in my list of libraries. So if I close everything down, look at this. I now have a new text file where I just created this library, but there's nothing in it yet. I have to transfer information over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the junctions level. If you only want to do the pump, you can just move that specific content or you can do the whole thing and select the parent level. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say copy content into this external file. And it copies it over. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the materials. So for my local user library, I'm going to select my materials. I'm going to say copy the content into this external file. All right. So now we have our local user library and we now have this external file that I created and <clears throat> I've got uh, pipes and junctions. So if I shut everything down and now if I open this text file again, look at that. Now this has information in here. So this has all my information. So now when I go to email this custom information to somebody, I'm going to send them this file. Or you could share it through a uh, file share. You can put it on a flash drive. You can uh, put it on a DVD and you can give it to somebody. Ultimately, you're going to give them this file, not your local user library. Okay. Now, let's pretend that I'm on the receiving side. Okay. So if I'm on the receiving side where I haven't gotten this uh, information, so to do that, I'm going to delete <coughs> the junctions and I'm going to delete the pipe materials. So I'm pretending like I am user B where I have a brand new installation and I don't have any custom uh, stuff on my uh, computer. So let's say that I draw a pipe and I open it up. Look at that. There's no adamantium and there's no uh, of the custom HTPE pipe I made. If I put a area change, there's no uh, reducer or there, there's no eccentric reducer that I made. And then there's no custom pump. Okay. So what I need to do is if I'm user B and I'm on the receiving end, I just downloaded this file from my email. If I want to use this information in one model only, then you could just add that library as a external library for a single model. And that would be perfectly fine. The way that you do that, is you would go to the library manager and you would click on uh, add existing library and you're going to search for it. There it is. So this is the library that was just emailed to me. So if you want to use this uh, 
library of information for only one model, then that's all you have to do. That's perfectly fine. So now if I click on close, I now have that information available. So I can now select adamantium or I can select my custom HDPE piping. <clears throat> I can go into my pump and I can select from the uh, manufacturer and the impeller trim and RPM. All that data is there for the one model. But I want this information to be available to me all the time. I don't want to have to constantly look for that file, add it to the list, and do that process every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to go backwards, okay? I'm going to take the information in the custom library right here, and I'm going to copy it over back to my local user library. So all you do is I can just go from this top level and say copy the content, and I'm going to put it in my local user library. And so now, let me minimize these things. Now there's my local user library. So here I can put it, well, what I need to do, since now I put this into my local user library, I can remove this external one from the list. That doesn't delete it. I've still got the file right here. I only removed it from the list that Fathom found, okay? And now I have my uh, custom materials and custom stuff all in my local user library. And now that is accessible for me in all other models. So to summarize the process, whenever you create anything custom on your computer, that's going to be in your local user library. When you share it with somebody else, you're not going to browse to this location and send them the uh, Fathom 12 uh, user .dat file. You're not sending that to them. Instead, you're going to either create a new library file like how I did, or if somebody already has one where they can send you, you can use that option. After you create a new custom library, you basically select your local user library and copy the content over into the other library file. And then when you're on the receiving end, you're essentially going backwards. <clears throat> you are clicking add existing library, you browse to where you saved it, and then you essentially take the information in this file and then you can go backwards and copy it into your local user library if you don't already have that. And that's how you share really easily the custom information with the uh, libraries that you are creating. And it seems like it might be a little bit daunting at first, but just give it a try. Just play with it a little bit. Add a few custom pieces of information and then practice creating a new library, copy the information over, and then go back into your local user library and delete it, and then look for your external file that you made, and then add it to the list and add it back. When else would you see additional data or additional library files appear in there? Well, let me give you one more example here. So uh, let's say if I do a brand new file and if you go to our uh, help menu and then show examples, this is where you can find all of our walkthrough tutorials. And <clears throat> there are some really cool cost calculation examples that are very helpful. Uh, this example demonstrates how to bring in libraries and cost libraries that are already created for you to use in a model. And this example shows you how to set up your custom 
cost information from scratch, both are excellent examples. Now, when you look through any of our examples, <clears throat> it'll always tell you what the model file is that's associated with it right here. So every walkthrough tutorial is intended for you to build the model from scratch. Okay, it's to give you that practice. But if you wanted to just open up the file directly, the completed version that we built, so that way you can see how we made it, you can do that. It tells you which file is associated. Well, for this particular example, there's a Fathom model, but there's also a engineering library, and then there's two cost libraries. I'm not going to get into the difference between those right now. You can work through the example and that'll demonstrate it for you. But watch what happens. If I go to open up that uh, model file, again, don't do what I'm doing. Do not open the model directly from the examples folder. Instead, copy this examples folder paste it somewhere else on your computer and then open it from there. You don't want to accidentally change the answers in the back of the book. So do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, controlled heat exchanger temperature example. And I'm going to select it and click open. <clears throat> the completed version already knows that these library files are associated with that model. If you were to read this carefully, you would see these three line items. That's telling you that there's a engineering data file that contains like loss factors and pumps and stuff like that. And then this contains the costs for those items. So because this model was developed and originally we built these databases from scratch, it knows that those files are associated with this model so it will automatically add those library files to the list and it'll connect them so here it is you can see now that i open that model here's the controlled heat exchanger temperature uh junction so this tells you the custom uh component for uh, uh branches and, and and pumps and three-way valves and then here are the uh, costs for those items. So this is another area, or this is another way that you might see more library items in that list. So now, if I was to uh, close this uh, file and then reopen Fathom, and I go back into my library manager, you're going to see that those library files were remembered from that model, they're still there. Even though I don't have that model up. So I'll show you. All right, so library, library manager. So as you can see, it still has that information, but it is not, act, or it, it found it, but it's not put it into the model where you're not having to uh, scroll through, you would have to check the boxes to turn this on. Same thing here with my external file. So it found these libraries and that they had information. So as you're doing this, you might have 10 different library files for 10 different systems that has custom information for each system. Well, as you start to make more and more library files, you're going to have a lot of scrolling to do and a lot of data that you're going to have to sift through. And sometimes it could just be a headache where you don't want to have to scan through it. Well, no problem. You can turn it off by unchecking that box. Or you could also just right click and say, remove the library from the list. Same thing here. I can remove the library from the list. And that makes it a little bit easier to work with. It doesn't it, it doesn't delete the file or the library file until you actually I mean until you actually delete that. All right. Uh, 
but that's how you can minimize what files are in that library folder. <clears throat> okay, well, that is uh, the webinar for today. And thank you all again very much for your time. And if anybody has questions, feel free to uh, contact us. You can find our contact details on our website, aft.com. And I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and week. Thank you very much, everyone, and take care.